Hello Beetle Crew! We're going to do this update video a little bit differently and start with a little story of how this beetle is in front of me. I've been MIA on this channel because I've been out and about walking and hiking around Japan since a dear friend from the US was visiting. But on one sweltering day, we had a transit to Tokyo from Yokohama and there was a quaint beetle store that I had bookmarked. I look over to my friend with eyes gleaming of ulterior motives and said, "Hey." Instead of going straight to Tokyo, how about we make some pit stops along the way? I heard there's a really cool Nissan engine museum that we could check out and there's a couple of other stores that look cool too. Being the emerging car connoisseur, he took the bait. Yeah. Granted, I was pretty interested in it too, so we hopped off at this local station and dragged our cumbersome luggage to the museum that was 20 minutes away by foot. It was hot, but thankfully not too humid. Now would be a great time to show the pictures that I took, but I didn't take any because I'm really, really bad with pictures unless it's insects on the ground or delicious food. Subscribe if you relate. But let me give you a fun fact instead. Nissan's first car was called the DAT or DAT, I don't know how people pronounce this thing, because it was the acronym of the company's investors at the time. And also because its pronunciation in Japanese would mean to dart off like a rabbit a perfect name for a small car, but the successor would be dubbed Datsun, which of course means son of dat, easy to understand for English speakers, right? But it was later changed to Datsun, S-U-N, we see today because Japanese speakers could interpret the S-O-N, Song, as the word for loss. Thankfully, they didn't need to change much as sun perfectly works in the land of the rising sun as well. I just love words if you couldn't tell from my past entomology etymology segments. Anyway, we left the museum and its unsurprising lack of gozen to go to my special interest store. Of course, I didn't take pictures or much b-roll, but they had a beetle themed lottery by using a garapon wheel, which is a bingo-esque lottery ball injector that reveals the prize depending on the color of the ball. It was only 500 yen and you could win a Heracles or an Atlas beetle. Thus. I had to do it. So I started cranking and I kept cranking for an uncomfortably long time because in my excitement, I completely forgot you had to go the reverse direction to actually drop the ball, which turned out to be a white ball, meaning I got the worst prize. I had a couple of options between cheap toys and junch tchotchkes, but thankfully, they had beetle jelly. As I selected the unintentionally most expensive beetle jelly I've ever procured, a meme flashed before my eyes. And thus, round two began. But this time ending abruptly with another white ball. I just threw a thousand yen down the drain for beetle jelly and despite the meme demon on my shoulder telling me to go again, I stopped. So how did I get this beetle? Well, particularly observative long-term viewers might speculate that I went to the store around my birthday, which if this is you, you're right, but you're also crazy. Please remember more important birthdays like superstar tennis player Novak Djokovic. Again, I digressed, but my heart of gold friend taking advantage of the weekend got me this beautiful wild Atlas beetle from Sumatra for my birthday. I gave him the honor of naming the boy and he dubbed the Frankie. Now that we're caught up, there's a couple of huge updates to my beetles, but first, the bad news. Unfortunately, my first metallifer passed away, so I'm going to transfer residency to Frankie. We're not going to change much except the orientation of the lobster so he can crawl around a little easier. Also, we'll make sure to keep this piece of wood that he's been treasuring since purchase. Youch. Okay, this hurts. I probably should have gotten a bigger stick to do this. Youchers. Okay, he's took he took the bait. He's on. Oh yeah. With Frankie settled and terraforming my well thought out home, we need to check out how our metallifer larvae is doing, but more importantly, whether it's still alive. With anxious anticipation, I started sifting through the dirt and found a larva looking much larger than before. Oh man, I was super happy to see that forbidden gummy worm. The previous check was way too premature and I was really worried that I accidentally killed him. But I'm so glad he's doing well. 
With that said, since he's alone, he definitely doesn't need this entire cage, so I moved him over to a smaller cage and kept the dirt he was raised with. Although I'm really happy that I was able to get one larva, I do think a couple of things went wrong when I tried for eggs, and the biggest is probably the humidity levels followed with a wildly variable ambient temperature. My apartment and its accomplice of an AC is horrible at keeping a stable environment. Also, I'll probably try adding logs into the substrate next time. I read a couple of Japanese breeders raw dogging the egg box and I followed suit, mostly because of my laziness. Regardless of how it went, I'm still crazy stoked that one passed the gauntlet of suboptimal conditions. If this little guy doesn't make it to adulthood, I will be depressed and bedrot ad infinitum. So let's hope for the best. The Grand Hercules larvae are still chilling and will be for a long time, so I'll give a size update in probably several months. That concludes this update video, but let's welcome Frankie to the channel. P.S. I also made an Instagram of which I'll post bugs that I found during walks, so maybe check it out and follow.